Today, I'm going to tell you briefly about the most common, easily accessible white wine varieties available in restaurants and stores and in which countries you usually find them made. Truthfully, there are so many white wine varieties, but I didn't want to overwhelm new wine drinkers with too many details, so I'm keeping it simple. Even though this is a beginner episode, I think you should hang out anyway, because most casual drinkers get information from me that they're not usually familiar with. I'm starting with what are called high acid whites. This includes Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Gris, also known as Pinot Grigio, Riesling, and sometimes Chardonnay. Why am I saying sometimes Chardonnay? I'll get to that in a couple of minutes. Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, and Pinot Gris are all indigenous to France, meaning they originated in France. The Italians call Pinot Gris, Pinot Grigio. Same grape, and it's become like an Italian invasion. Remember when the world experienced the British invasion, the Beatles rock group in the 1960s? Well, think of this as the Italian invasion, Pinot Grigio, which began in the 1990s and is still going strong. Sauvignon Blanc is grown in several parts of the world. Most of it's inexpensive with refreshing bright acidity. It's light bodied and tastes of fresh fruits like apples, peaches, pears, and maybe a floral perfumed aroma and flavor. However, the dominant flavor of New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc is grapefruit. The aroma and flavor coming out of New Zealand is a right hook then a left hook, and then an explosion of grapefruit big enough to knock you out. This isn't either a bad thing or a good thing. It depends on what you like. If you like grapefruit, then you found your nirvana. If not, go to another part of the world because New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc will almost always be a glass of intense grapefruit, both in the way it tastes and the way it smells. Riesling is the lone man out and originated in Germany. Like Sauvignon Blanc, Riesling is grown in several parts of the world. Most bottles are reasonably priced and will have aromas and flavors of peaches, apricots, or in some climates, ripe apples, and will be slightly perfumed too. They'll range anywhere from dry to sweet, so you have to ask your wine purveyor about how sweet the wine will be. However, Riesling is most comfortable and produces some of its best wine in its home country of Germany. Expect super intense aromas and flavors of peaches and apricots from Germany. Riesling's second favorite place is Alsace, France. The two countries make two completely different styles of wine with only one thing in common. They're high acid and they're light body. German Rieslings are mostly slightly sweet to sweet with small amounts being produced dry and very light in body, except the very sweet examples. They can be very expensive, but they are worth every penny if you like sweet wines. Riesling from the Alsace region of France like, is like the serious cousin. It's fuller in body and always bone dry. It doesn't flounce around with intense peachy or apricot aromas. It sits more quietly and leans toward less showy display of aromas and flavors. Include some aromas and flavors of wet stones and lemon with these Alsatian Rieslings too. Now for the poor maligned Chardonnay. Chardonnay has oaked and unoaked versions and it has a bad rap among wine connoisseurs because it's often over oaked to the point that the variety itself is completely unrecognizable. In fact, some people actually jokingly call it Chateau 2 by 4 An acquaintance of mine used to give some wine seminars at a restaurant entitled one of his, his seminars, ABC. Initially, I thought that referred to something about liquor stores in various states in America that are called ABC stores, but that wasn't it at all. The subject was anything but Chardonnay. <laughs> Personally, I still like Chardonnay. The grape itself is so versatile and it makes various wine styles. It can be soft, meaning low as 
acid, buttery, very oaky and creamy and smooth. Then again, it can almost be water white made into sparkling wine as in champagne. It can be bone dry and made with searing acidity and everything in between. Next, here's what I'm hoping will be a profound wine enlightenment moment for all of you out there. Even though I have just reviewed four of the most common white wine varieties, don't choose a wine on the grape variety alone. Each grape variety can taste different depending on who makes the wine, how it's made, and where it's made. You may not like all Sauvignon Blancs or all Chardonnays. Instead, I encourage you to try a different wine and taste what you like and what it tastes best to you. After all, life is too short to drink bad wine. See you next time on Corks and Screw Caps. Please hit our subscribe button below to get future notifications and check us out on Facebook and Instagram.